Well, welcome back, everyone, to... Well, not really welcome back. We've never really done this zoo before. Welcome, everyone. This isn't even a zoo. What the hell am I talking about? Welcome, everyone. My name is Leaf. It's so great to see you guys once again for a one-off habitat build. Yeah, I really just wanted to get in here and really get the juices pumping, you know? I just got back. And again, my mint's still in here. Whoops. Uh, I just got back from... Bronx Zoo and I was so inspired so I was just like you know what I want to build something kind of like Bronx so I was thinking about my little trip by the way in case if you guys are like even within a three hour radius it's so worth it just to get up in the morning and just drive to Bronx it's literally one of the best zoos I've been to I think I'll happily say it's the best zoo I've been to so far but yeah, I think it's entirely worth it to go there. But I was feeling so inspired from there. So I was like, you know, I want to build something kind of based off of it. So what's a nice, easy habitat that I could kind of make? So I was thinking back to my trip and they have this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful habitat. Just like an entire mountainside with Nubian Ibex, Gelatas, and Rock Hyrax. And I was like, hot diggity dog i want to make that <laughs> so that's what we're kind of working with today so the whole vibe of what i'm building for is kind of like this nice ethiopian dig site uh probably not ethiopian somewhere around like you know northeast africa kind of uh northeast central kind of you know what i'm saying uh so we're kind of working with that and it's something that i was so inspired to do just because of like all the theming at bronx so they have this beautiful gelata habitat Again, going back to the gelatas, uh, with all this wonderful, wonderful theming. So I was like, all right, I really want to recreate that. So that's what we're doing today. <laughs> Not really recreating, but kind of like, you know, just getting our blood pumping. Because uh, once I got back from like, you know, my trip, once I got back from the Bronx, I have not felt inspired at all for Planet Zoo. I know it's quite sad to say. I've been modding a lot. I'm sure you guys have been seeing all that. You guys will see it in the mod showcase this week. But no, I've been modding a lot and I really haven't been building all too much. So I really just wanted an excuse to kind of get myself right back in that seat, really start to build again. And this was the perfect way for me to do so. So that's exactly what we're building today. Uh, a lot of the things that I'm trying to do over here, I kind of pushed myself to work on smaller details. So this is probably one of my favorite things in this entire build is this little staircase. So I really wanted to have it be, again, off of like a dig site or something like that. So I have this kind of makeshift little walkway up here up to an alternative uh, viewing area. And I'm really happy with how well the viewing area turned out because it gives you such a nice little vista over the entire habitat that it looks just gorgeous in the end. And I don't know, I'm just, I love the angles in here. It feels very PK. And I know I probably like should probably explain PK is prehistoric kingdom. I know some of you guys have probably never heard of that game before because I don't have it on my channel. <laughs> I don't know why. I just don't really want to build for it. I don't know. But either way, it feels very PK in here because of how you're able to do like rock work and stuff. And I really wanted to push myself to do some very interesting rock work. So that's what we do in here today. So essentially what I'm working with over here right now is working on this upper platform and kind of blending it into the rock side so I kind of start to um you know I start I kind of start to paint the rocks on a little bit and I use a mix of the Serengeti rocks and the faux rocks from NDP's faux rocks pack um are you guys tired of me saying rocks yet uh but making our way throughout here and also doing some fencing as well I really want to do a custom fence over here too, just to have it feel a lot more bright uh, and have it feel a little bit more detailed. So I kind of work with the Safari Pack once again, and I kind of do this very interesting kind of fence. It feels very nice and very, um, I don't know, feels very rural. So I kind of use those tiny little diamond pieces from the Safari Pack, and I kind of just overlap them on top of each other, and it just gives this nice effect that the... Um, I'm trying to think that the normal ropes don't have and that the mesh doesn't have. It has this kind of like 3D quality to it because, well, let's face it, it is 3D. Uh, and it just looks incredible in the end. I don't know, I just really do like it. And I also don't really do rails over there just because I wasn't feeling it. This is very much a build where I was like, if I don't feel it, 
I don't want to build it. So I do kind of stuff like kind of out of order. So I did a little bit of foliage everywhere just to like lay down my initial thoughts. And I start to do like some habitat stuff. I go back to like the guest stuff. It's very much a flip flop all throughout here. So I start to add some wood beams over here and I'm like, you know what? I want to make this an entire viewing gallery. So we kind of got to work on this and I'm pretty happy with how well this one kind of shaped up. I really didn't have anything in mind when I do build stuff like this. I kind of build it kind of like freeform. I kind of freestyle it a little bit. And I think it kind of works to my advantage sometimes because I don't know, it's just very fun just to go in with no plan of what you're going to do and see where your mind kind of takes you. I think it's extremely, extremely rewarding to kind of go through and kind of do stuff like that. It's just very fun. It's just a very fun process. Yeah, I just really enjoy it. Uh, so essentially making everything else right here and just giving it a little bit more realism. So we kind of break up those beams up there and have it feel a little bit more supported. And we also do a roof up here. I think I do a custom roof with the uh, Australian planks. And it looks pretty good in the end. Like, I don't know, it's just very nice and very basic feels very dusty which i think works well for this kind of habitat so we kind of work with that all throughout here and we kind of do some custom ones over here we have to like you know we have to problem solve it we have gaps in the ceiling so we have to account for that we kind of doubles up some pieces and i don't know i'm just very happy with how well that entire habitat turned out and i also do a little bit of a guest railing over here just as a way to keep them away from the glass because of course we don't want any smudges on there so we want guests to be able to like put their hands on those little um, beams over there just as a way to have them like you know have something to touch without going right up to the glass and knocking on the glass you know trying to get the monkey's attention and whatnot we don't want anything like that because homogized baboons are very scary oh my gosh have you seen their teeth they're horrifying animals oh my gosh but they're so gorgeous too and also, I really just want an excuse to build for the Hamadryas and for the Rock Hyrax because I don't think I've showed them off in a mod showcase yet. You guys probably don't even know that they exist. Uh, the coolest thing about Hyraxes are that they, uh, they're extremely closely related to elephants. So at some point in the evolutionary tree, they kind of split off from elephants, which I think is wicked cool because you have this tiny furry animal that sometimes has fangs. And then you just have giant proboscidae, like Asian elephants and Indian elephants and like, you know, mammoths and stuff. And you just put the two next together and you're like, how the hell does this happen? You know, but kind of making our way throughout here and adding some faux rocks. I'm using this as a little trick from Andrew Wyatt. When you do use a faux rocks, if you want it to look more realistic, you change that undershade to be completely white. And it really does help to, uh, I don't know, really sell the vibe that it feels a little bit more realistic than the other ones because when you do shade those rocks in with that secondary color sometimes it gives some extra shadows that you don't really want and it's not really good for screenshots and stuff like that so if you guys ever get the chance start trying to experiment with like those colors that you use in the faux rocks especially like those um like those pebbles those are ones i really do suggest you guys start to play with you know start to have some fun with and I also wanted this section up here just as like a nice Kopi rock. Uh, while I'm not really using the Kopi rocks, I really just wanted to get the Hyrax up there. So we kind of play with them up there a little bit. We don't really do too much up there. They kind of just sit there. You guys will see it in the B-roll once we actually do get to that point. But I was just playing around with it. I really wanted them to stay up there. Because when you go to like the Bronx Zoo, like Hyrax and ibex i, I kind of like that they put them together and the gelata habitat the hyrax kind of stay to themselves and the gelatas stay to themselves and the ibex just kind of head butt heads with each other and stuff like that so it is really cool to see how well these multi-species habitats kind of work out also i apologize if you hear a little bit of background noise i have my window open and there's a bunch of police sirens outside but making our way throughout here and adding some more kind of like, you know, interesting things. I had to use, absolutely had to use Caesar Creates, um, what do you call those? Dead trees. I really love the vibes of them. There really is no way to do it custom. Uh, if you guys get the chance, I really do suggest you guys use those. Ultimately, because they're just amazing as it is. Uh, making our way throughout here as well and adding a few more fences just having everything feel a little bit more better a little bit more secure 
I don't think I'll continue this entire build later down the line. I really don't plan on it. I just really wanted to get a habitat out for you guys. And I was having a lot of fun with this. It was just a fun concept to do. And I know you guys are always along for the ride. So I hope you guys enjoy this a little bit of a one-off. Um, and also adding some guest, not guest, but keeper area as well. And I just do a nice little simple building back there. I have like gates and stuff like that. So that the monkeys are able to actually go back into their holding right there. It's nothing really too crazy. I just do my signature, throw a gate on it, and that's about it. But I still like it because of that. I don't know. It still feels very nice. Um, kind of realistic. I always try and build realistic as possible for, you know, most of the things. Once we actually get to the backstage is where I start to kind of taper off a little bit. But hey, what can you do? What I also add throughout here is a lot of grass and a lot of foliage just to have it feel a little bit more dry. In order to get a few more dry effects, I really do suggest you guys use like the olive trees, the marula trees, and even like this bright white kind of like, you know, this uh, slate kind of colored. I don't really know what color that is. Uh, periwinkle glass. Gra grass. Wow. I really can't talk today, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, but I essentially use a lot of that and the elephant grass, not the elephant, that's a prairie cord grass. And I also use this sail from the workshop and kind of change out the colors. Really wasn't feeling them to begin with, the big white, but I do opt for like more of an orange just to kind of keep the vibes all together. I think it's pretty nice juxtaposed to the rest of the habitat. It feels nice and bright and that's why I really like it. Also adding away for our baboons and hyraxes to actually reach the top of that rock via a nice little uh, log and also adding the finishing details before we actually get into the b-roll so i do want to thank you guys so much for watching i really do appreciate you guys always supporting me it is always such a pleasure to have you guys back here once again for another build but that's about it for today i can't wait to see you guys in the next episode take care and have the most wonderful of wonderful days Bye bye now